here in this desert, we find growing just underneath the surface of certain rocks, microorganisms, algae. These organisms grow under the rocks because the rocks trap a little bit of moisture, so it's not quite as dry, but they have to grow under the white stones because enough light can get through the white stones so they can photosynthesize. This precarious existence could have been the way that life on Mars survived for billions of years. Who would have been the last organism to live on Mars? Maybe an organism living underneath a rock. Maybe when we go to Mars, we'll search for, for relics, for fossils of this type of life. But perhaps the search will turn up much more than just fossils. Despite the barren landscape, some biologists are now uttering what was for many years a heresy, that microbes may still be living on Mars today. Microbiologist Todd Stevens has discovered that deep underground in Washington state, life is flourishing in apparently solid rock. Until the mid-1980s, most people thought that the deepest you could dig down into the ground and find living organisms was around 30 feet. But Stevens has discovered that life on Earth can thrive as deep as two miles down. The Columbia River area of Washington state is covered in ancient lava flows thousands of feet thick. At the edge of a river gorge where the lava flows are exposed, Stevens has discovered how tiny microorganisms can live in solid rock. Here at the bottom of the canyon, we can kind of get an idea of what their habitat looks like. Here we have the intersection between two basalt flows. And at one time, water has flowed through this layer over tens of thousands of years, and microorganisms live here. Well, this is exciting because if this is correct, this is a way that living organisms can live in places where the surface of the planet is not habitable. On Mars, any microbes living deep in the rock would be well protected from the hostile surface environment. Stevens was researching the safe disposal of nuclear waste when he made a startling discovery about life deep underground. This one has to be several hundred meters deep in water. He took water samples here from boreholes that were drilled two miles down through the volcanic rock. When we sampled the water that was coming out of the deep aquifers in this volcanic rock, we were kind of surprised to find that each liter of water contained between a million and a hundred million microbial cells. And we know that the vast majority are actually attached to the rock, so there's many more than that down there. To prove they could survive without sunlight, Stevens bred the microbes in his laboratory, simulating their subterranean world. His results confirmed life's amazing ability to live anywhere there's water. These bacteria, stained red, feed off hydrogen gas created when water reacts with the volcanic rock. Even more exciting, these bacteria bear striking resemblance to the apparent fossils found in the Mars meteorite. the descendants of these fossilized microbes are still living deep under the Martian surface. The temperature on Mars is well below freezing. Any life near the surface would be frozen solid. Astrophysicist Richard Hoover has made the astonishing discovery that microbial life can be reanimated even after it's been frozen for thousands of years. The Fox Tunnel in Alaska is one of the coldest places on Earth.
It was originally excavated for gold mining and dug out of the permafrost where even the soil 150 feet below the surface is frozen solid. We have found microorganisms in the permafrost of Earth that are alive and yet they have been frozen for up to three million years. Therefore, it is possible that there may be microorganisms frozen in the permafrost of Mars. By warming samples from the permafrost, Hoover can revive these dormant organisms. It's not just microbes that wake up when the temperature rises. Even plants like moss can be brought back to life. I have here a moss that was frozen in the permafrost for 40,000 years, and after it was extracted from the permafrost, the moss started to grow. It realized that the weather had gotten better and it was time to grow again. As they're warmed up, any samples of life collected from Mars by NASA may also be revived. Returning a piece of Mars to Earth will require the strictest quarantine. It may be the most risky venture the human race has ever undertaken. No one knows what might happen if Martian bugs were released onto our planet. If there's life on Mars, uh, we have to be cautious because that life is not understood. And as we know, microbial life can be quite dangerous. And both viruses and bacteria can be dangerous to humans. It can also hurt the environment. Unlike the meteorites, which have been sterilized by natural radiation as they travel through space, these rocks will have been transported directly from Mars. They will be treated as if they might have an incredibly dangerous microbe in them. We don't know that, we don't think that'll be true, but we can't afford to take the chance. In 1989, Space Shuttle Atlantis set off on a mission that may lead us to the first definitive discovery of life beyond our own planet. On board was the unmanned Galileo spacecraft, bound for the king of the planets, Jupiter. In this remote frozen region, 500 million miles from the sun, the last thing the mission scientists were expecting to find was signs of life. Giant Jupiter is big enough to swallow the Earth a thousand times over. Its family of moons forms a miniature solar system. The four biggest are Io, Ganymede, Callisto, and Europa. Brilliant white Europa is completely covered in ice, its surface crisscrossed by strange grooves. Many scientists now believe that this frozen world is the most